One of the famous quotes of journalist Ida B. Wells, we have it right here in our studio. And it says, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them. She's absolutely correct in that. And the truth, turn the light of truth upon them. Now, over the weekend, Donald Trump, on a Saturday, went to a black church. The church is called the 180 Church, is led by Pastor Lorenzo Sewell. It's on the outskirts of downtown Detroit. Now, it was supposed to be about reaching black people. Can y'all please show the video of all the white folks who were there? Uh, we, we could literally, so let's see, Byron Donalds was there. Stop, stop, freeze it, freeze it, freeze it, freeze it. Now, let's see here. Go, go. I don't know if we can, y'all can get me over here. But let me see here. Can y'all get me over here? I'm, I'm trying to see. Go, go start the video. Go, go, go back. Go back a little bit. Go back a little bit. Okay. All right. So, come on. Uh, hold on. No, no. No, no, go on, start from over. Bring that. Uh, so I'm trying to, so let me do this here. So let me go, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to count here. I'm trying, oh. I'm, I'm trying to sit here and count, y'all. Uh, I'm trying to count here, because I'm like, I'm really confused. I'm really confused here. Okay, so. Um, So let's see here, okay? All right, I see a black guy right here. Okay, I see a, I see a black guy right here. Let me go on back, let me see. I don't know what the hell that was. Okay, I see a black guy. I see a black guy right here. Okay, let's see here. Okay, all right, can y'all play the video again? Play it? Freeze it? Okay, hold up. Now, here we go. I see a black person right here. Okay. Black person, black person, black person. I think that's a black person. Play the video. Um, let's see here. Okay, all right. Black person, black person, black person. Uh, run back over again, run back over again. Okay, run back over again. I'm... Okay, so I, I think I, I saw all the black people. They're by 12. That was it, they're by 12. By 12 black people here, okay. now. Uh, this is the only angle we got? Okay, guys, there's another one I saw. Okay, fine. Okay, okay, I want, no, I want, okay, I want you, I want you, I want you to play this over again, y'all. Play it over again. Okay, so Ben Carson was talking. Okay, play it over again. Freeze it, freeze it, freeze it, freeze it, freeze it. Pl play it forward, freeze it, freeze it. All right, y'all see this right here? See all them vacant seats right there? That main church wasn't packed. Play it. Phrase it, vacant seats right here. This is Kellyanne Conway talking to lying ass Maria Bartiromo on Fox News. Biden's not doing anything like that. Look at the contrast of just this weekend. You got you got Donald Trump in Detroit yeah. talking to 8,000 people and then at a black church, of course. Biden's not doing anything like that. Look. Wait, wait, did she? Did, run that back. Biden's not doing anything like that. Look at the contrast of just this weekend. You got, you got Donald Trump in Detroit yeah. talking to 8,000 people and then at a black church, of course. Biden's not doing anything stop, like that. Stop, Can she please tell me whether other 7,600 
and 50 people are? Because I damn sure didn't see no eight. Y'all, do y'all realize that the church that held the Aretha Franklin funeral, that also held the Rosa Parks funeral, don't fit 8,000 people? What in the hell? She is, of course, the queen of alternative facts. Okay, gotcha. All right. That's Kellyanne Conway. Okay, all right. I'm through over here. I, 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 so you so, saw them so-called black people. Okay, so, all right. So this thing's supposed to be a conversation, y'all. It's supposed to be a conversation uh, about um, uh, black people uh, in this church. Okay. All right, I, I'm, I'm utterly confused by what, I'm utterly confused by what was on display here I was utterly confused by what was on display here. And now they ain't a church. They in a church. So I, I don't understand. I don't understand what the lion was. I don't understand what the lion was all about. Okay. Now, uh, now, now play that video right there. Play that video right there. Play that video right there. All right. Pull that up. Now stop right there. Now, damn. Do y'all see? This is like some straight fake ass groupie stuff you you my damn if you go if you gonna sit here and tr tr damn really what we got here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen y'all come on it's fifteen damn people that, he, he literally had 15 people. I wonder how many of them are paid actors, because y'all know Trump pays for people to come to their rallies, okay? But these fools are sitting here. Just press play. If y'all want to see some, look at this silly ass. Uh, look at this. That's it. Th that's it. That's, that's it. They found 15 of them. Stop right there. Here's my other deal. Um, I don't know who these two Negroes are, but you cannot be a real black person and have your Bama ass wearing a hat in the pulpit. I don't know who these two Bamas right here are, but they need their ass whooped. Okay, all right, so let me, let's, let's, okay. So Donald Trump sat here and he goes to this and of course all the conservative media covering is Newsmax, they all covering it. They all sit in Newsmax, uh, uh, Fox News, they all making a big deal out of it. Uh, so let's just go ahead and start the lying. Press play. It's an honor to be here. It's a very important area for us. Uh, we've done more for, and I say this, I say it proudly, more for the black population than any president since Abraham Lincoln. That's a big step. I start right there, y'all. I, 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 I done heard some silly ass comments before. That man right there has got to be on meth. You ain't done more for black people did LBJ did. You ain't done more for black people than Bill Clinton did. You ain't done more for black people than Truman and FDR did. His punk ass actually said, matter of fact, the, Ida B. Wells was sitting there campaigning for Herbert Hoover. This fool actually, that, a straight ass lie. Now y'all notice he says that he ain't never following that up with any facts whatsoever. And, they, and, and them 12 Negroes, yes, Donald. Yes, Donald. Yes, Donald. You're our man, Donald. Lying ass. Go ahead and roll it. And Crooked Joe Biden has done nothing for you except talk. It's only talk. It's all talk. He gets nothing. He didn't gets nothing for anyone. He was lost. In, he's in Europe. He's walking around. He doesn't know where the hell he is. And he's supposed to help Detroit. <laughs> I don't think so. But phrase, we the lowest African phrase. Hold up, boy. We can play that lie. 
Uh, l- let me remind y'all, Donald Trump opposed the auto bailout. It was Obama and Biden that made sure that the bail- auto industry got bailed out. The reason there is an auto industry today is because of Obama and Biden after what took place with the housing uh, foreclosure crisis in 2008 when the economy went uh, in a massive tailspin. But of course, uh, that fool will never tell you that. Oh, all that investment in Detroit all came after that as well. And so none of that stuff happens without the investment in Detroit by Obama Biden. Those are called facts. Clearly, none of these fools knew anything about these facts. Listen to this lie. American unemployment rate and the lowest African-American poverty rate ever recorded, ever, ever recorded in my four years. Stop, right there, see? See, whenever you start using the word ever, that means that, oh, ever, meaning before you and after you, but the fact of the matter is, That is an absolute lie that Donald Trump, the black unemployment rate in November 2020 was 10.3%. In December 2020, it was 9.9%. In January 2021, it was 9.2%. The highest of any group other than teenagers. The source, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. When Donald Trump talks about black unemployment, the black unemployment rate under Trump was 5.3% in August of 2019, oh, the lowest ever? Hmm, that was in April uh, under Biden-Harris, that actually under uh, Biden-Harris, it was 4.7%. Okay, just in case some of y'all ain't good with math, 4.7% is lower than 5.3%. So you can't say it was the lowest ever under you because that's a flat out lie. I'm just simply saying, oh, also, Trump is also lying about uh, the black poverty rate. The black poverty rate, lowest ever recorded since 1959, was 17.1% when August 2022. Who was in office? Biden Harris. So again, right there, he lied again. Roll it. We lifted 6.6 million people out of poverty. Black Americans saw their largest increase in home ownership on record. There's never been anything like it. Stop. During our period of time. Stop. Flat out lie. Flat out lie. The highest period of black home ownership took place under President Bill Clinton, not under Donald Trump. I don't know what the hell he's talking about, but that's just a flat out lie. And so, again, this is what happens when you sit there, uh, uh, you know, um, and just make stuff up that make stuff up. And so that's what he does. He's sitting here and just um, uh, just just making the stuff up, just sitting here and just, well, man, sit, let me just go ahead and, you know, just just make it up. Uh, and so, in fact, here's the whole deal, y'all. Um, let's see. Um, African-Americans also uh, have increased their black home ownership as of February 2024. Um, and let's see here. Let me pull information up. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Black home ownership rate, February 2024, was uh, 44.1%. So Trump is just sitting here, y'all. He's just sitting here lying. He, uh, he's just lying. Uh, but again, though, that's what happens when you sit here and just, you know, make it up uh, because he goes. And so here's it right here. So, um, Black home ownership increased during the pandemic, uh, but uh, what happened was you saw, of course, uh, uh, that particular change. And so the numbers went up uh, to, uh, let's see right here, the black home ownership rate increased two percentage points. Let me see if I can pull this up for y'all. Give me one second. Uh, Black home ownership rate rate increased from 42.2% to 44.2%. Um, Now, and today it's lower than it was in 2000. Again, let me say it again. Let me say it again. In 2000, 2000, 2000, the black home ownership rate was 45.7%. 45.7. That was higher than when Trump was president. He's lying. Press play. 
time. We gave record funding to historically black colleges. Stop. Oh, hell no. Now stop. Now we done debunked that damn lie repeatedly. You notice we gave record funding. He can never give a number. Congressman Byron Donalds can never give a number. Ben Carson can never give a number. They can never give a number because the number doesn't exist. $16 billion to HBCUs under Biden Harris. It ain't even close to Trump and it ain't even close to Obama. So Donald Trump is lying. That is the third or fourth lie this man has stated in this black church. Lord have mercy. I don't know what God these folks serve, but they try for this hell. Press play. As you all know that, I got great support. And I, I will just tell you a quick story. The heads of the colleges would come to Washington once every year. And after two years, I said, why do you guys keep coming? And I liked them. I liked a couple of them. Really, they're friends of mine. But uh, the whole group was very, uh, they were just terrific people, men and women heading up the colleges. Uh, and I said, why do you keep coming? Because they won't give us long-term financing. We have to come back every year. One said, and I say respectfully, he said, they make us feel like a bunch of beggars. We have to come back to Washington every year. I said, well, we're going to take care of that. And I got them actually more money than they asked for by far. And we got them long-term financing. And I said, the only thing sad is that I'll never see you again, probably. I will never meet you again. Phrase, the phrase, we- phrase. See right there, just straight-ass lying. First of all, everybody got to come to Congress every single year when it comes to appropriations to seek additional funding. And what he said there is an absolute lie. It's just, just a flat-out lie. The program that he's talking about is a very specific program that he zeroed out of the budget. It was Congresswoman Alma Adams we had to put back in the budget it was the work of Congressman Bobby Scott and the CBC. They got that particular program passed as a $250 million program, and $91 million of that goes to HBCUs. HBCUs get way more money, billions from other programs. So, y'all, he just straight as lying. He's straight lying. So that's the specific program he's talking about. And as Dr. Walter Kimbrough, two-time HBCU president, laid out, that man straight up is lying about that because his budget zeroed it out. Press play got used to meeting. I kept saying, and then after a couple of years, I said, why do you have to keep coming back? I mean, you've been, he said, we've been doing this for a long time, for 20 years, I guess. The one gentleman said he was here 20 years. He's been doing it for 20 years. Phrase. I said, that's. Phrase, again, he's lying. It's a program that was created under President George W. Bush. It was continued under President Obama. And then, of course, uh, it happened there. So please, stop sitting here lying. Uh, You sat. Anyway, he's just a straight, he's a liar, and he's sitting in that church line, and those simple Simon Negroes are allowing him to play them with the lies. Press play. Not right, and they do a very important job and a great job, and uh, so I got you long-term financing, and it was, and I think all of them are voting for Trump. I don't know, I can't say maybe, but I'd say 99% of them, and if they aren't, I don't know what the hell the other side did, but... Uh, Phrase. We'll start an investigation. I'll tell you what the other side did. They actually gave $16 billion. They forgave uh, more than $1.5 billion uh, in loans to them for construction. Uh, so we could go on and on and on. Donald, do you really want us to pull the numbers out? See, y'all, this is why you can't let politicians come in front of you and say stuff without any data. He did not give a single number. He did not say, oh, I gave eight, 10, 20 billion dollars because he can't. Because you know what? He only been to HBCU one time and that was a damn accident. Press play. What the hell the other side did, but uh, (laughs) we'll start an investigation or something, okay? We passed historic criminal justice reform, something that they've been after, people have been after for mostly the black community (laughs) for years and years. And to get it done, they needed me. And as you know, President Obama tried Biden doesn't even try. Well, he doesn't have to because we got it done, but we're going to get it improved. But uh, President Obama tried, was unable to get it done. You needed conservative votes. And I got conservative votes and we got criminal justice reform Freeze. done. Let, 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 let me remind everybody what happened. First of all, under Obama, uh, Democrats made a bad miscalculation. They actually felt they could have gotten a stronger bill once Hillary Clinton became president. And so they, st- they stalled that particular bill. That's what happened. 
two. Uh, it was pursued, but remember, Democrats controlled the House when, in 2017. It was Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, Congressman Cedric Richmond, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, members of the House Judiciary Committee who drove the first step at through. Don't forget. Uh, now, did you have conservative support? You actually had that, because I met with Jared Kushner to go over what was their particular plan about this at the White House for more than an hour. But let me tell you what happened. When the first step at went to the United States Senate, it was Senate Democrat, Senator Dick Durbin, Senator Kamala Harris, Senator Cory Booker, and Republican Senator Chuck, Chuck Grassley, who chaired the Senate Judiciary Committee, who said this bill is weak, it needs to be strengthened, and that's actually what happened. Of course, Trump is taking credit uh, and, a, and a, a lap dance, I'm sorry, a victory lap uh, for this, but the reality is uh, that wasn't the case. And so without Democrats, there is no First Step Act, so he didn't get it. It was passed by Democrats in the House. Those are what we call facts. Press play. Nobody else could have done that. And we're very proud of it. When I left office, we had no inflation. Gasoline was less than $2. Phrase. A year more. I'm sorry. Go ahead and play the rest of that nonsense. Mortgage was at 2.6%. The border was secure. Wages were rising. And the jobs were the best in the history of our country for African American for black Americans, the jobs were the best in the history of our country. Other than that, what did I do? Not that much. Phrase. Not that much. Now Hmm, that's real interesting. Uh, all the things that he laid out when he left office and how old things were amazing and things were wonderful and uh, we had jobs and all that sort of stuff. Gasoline was two dollars. Um uh Really? Is that, is, that, is that what happened there, Donald? And so is, is, was there something you, you're you forgetting that was going on? The reason why gasoline was $2 a gallon that you claim when you left office? You, I mean, that, that, that was just, I, I swear as I listened to that, that was just one thing that was just sort of drop, jumping out at me that I never heard. Henry? Watch the press will put no, that No, Henry? Do that. iPad. COVID! Wasn't nobody driving when you left office. Of course, gasoline was low. And the unemployment rate was through the roof when you left office. The man is flat out lying, y'all. He's lying. Press play. In the history of our country, other than that, what did I do? Not that much. Freeze. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, the economy that we have is we've had the most consecutive months of un un unemployment under 5% since the 1960s. Since the 1960s. He's lying. He's straight ass lying. Press play. Not that much. Now watch, the press will put that on. I didn't do that much because they're bad people, you know, they're bad. That's why they're the fake news. You have the same problem that I do. They're <laughs> fake news. No, fake news is everything that fool just said. And they said, yeah, yuck, 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 yucking it all up, allowing that fool to lie. Then, of course, there were some questions that were being asked. And so you sat there, and I, I, and I just sat here and was like, oh, my God, listening to some of this nonsense. And so, um, so there was a question that was uh, asked. It was a very specific question that I found to be... Um, I found it to be quite interesting. And so what I want you to do is, uh, I want you to actually listen to this, y'all, and Lord have mercy. Unity is disenfranchised, we're marginalized, we're pushed aside. And there are two things that are happening with crime and employment. You're an entrepreneur. How do you see funding entrepreneurs specifically keeping the black dollar in the black community. Let me explain. If I want to eat, I have to give my money to the Albanians at Coney Island. If you want to get gas, you need to go to the Chaldeans. If you want to have your hair look like mine, you got to go to Asians. And I thank God for Asians. My wife is right there. She's Asian. Our children are Blasian. So I give it up to my Asian brothers and sisters. Okay, I, I, I got to phrase that bullshit right there. Because uh, first of all, y'all, I've been to Detroit. To act like you don't have black-owned restaurants in Detroit is a simple lie. And then he's trying to say 
only Asians do black hair in Detroit? That might be news to all the black barbers and the black cosmetologists that are living in Detroit. What the hell is he talking about? But it gets better. The hits keep coming. Listen to this. But we don't keep the black dollar in the black community. You're an entrepreneur. What does it look like for black entrepreneurs to be able to get the resources they need so we don't look for a handout, but a hand up? Okay, now, right there, you heard him say, what does it look like for us to get the resources for black entrepreneurs? That was the question. Keep going. And, and you know, and we talk about this, you have a lot of dollars in the black community and they don't keep it. I think one of the biggest problems that I see is the crime. They have to stop the crime. If they stop the crime, you're gonna see more and more stores sprout and we're losing them in other communities, too, where there's crime. They just, you see empty stores, you see them all over. They see big stores they moved in 10 years ago. They spent millions of dollars to build it, and now they're leaving. And uh, these are not necessarily black communities. In many cases, they're not at all. But where there's crime, there's empty stores, and you don't keep the money. So I think the biggest thing we can do is uh, stop the crime. We're going to stop the crime. We have to let people feel free and, and be able to walk outside and not even think about being mugged or hit or shot or anything. And, uh, you know, one of the examples, I see the love in this church. It's incredible what you've done. You've done an incredible job. I would like to ask if you could final out with a prayer. Does that make, is that okay? I don't want to get you by surprise here. Okay, uh, I don't want to get you by surprise. How about your ass surprise us and answer that damn question? See, Y'all notice Donald Trump's answer to anything black is crime, crime. Donald Trump thinks black people are thugs. There are black people and there are black neighborhoods that don't have high crime rates. But see, the idea of black entrepreneurs, okay, really? So black tech company owners always live in the high crime areas, black law firms, high crime areas, black engineering companies, Black architecture companies, black owned media companies. We can go on, black bond companies. Uh, we can go on and on and on. But for Donald Trump, oh, yeah, crime, crime. That's how he thinks about black people. Crime, crime, crime. But let me, let me, let me also remind y'all, this pastor didn't say nothing, though, about Donald Trump, how he was attacking black people in Detroit in 2020, calling them essentially thugs and saying how they rigged and stole the election, how he called out the two black women uh, in Fulton County as well. Y y oh, 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 I'm sorry, we forget that. Remember when the head of the Michigan Republican Party said we should count all the votes in Michigan except Detroit? See, we ain't forgot none of that stuff. We ain't forgot none of that stuff uh, that was asked. But, but I want y'all to hear the prayer. Listen to this. Because this was not, but I've heard so much about you and so many great things, and it's such an honor to be here. It's such an incredible honor. And with so many of my friends that are political leaders that are really going places, and he is on the list, by the way, and I don't know if he's going to make it, but he's, he's on a list of a few people, right? Not too many people. Would you like to be VP? Huh? <laughs> ooh, ooh, let me sit here and let me sit here and do a dance. Do a dance, do a dance, cause Uncle Daddy Trump asked me to do a dance in Detroit. Silly ass. Tell you one thing, it'd be a good one too, but I'd love to ask you to finish off with a prayer. Does that make sense? I would love to pray. Let, thank you very much. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, fifth, the 45th president of the United States of America. He was charged with 34 felonies, then he raised 53 million in 24 hours. Ooh, let me go ahead and stop that right there. First of all, I'm very confused, Pastor Sewell. Now, mind you, I want y'all to know we invited Pastor Sewell on the show. He was unavailable trying to get him later in the week. Oh, I would love for him to come on the show because I would love to ask him, you were praying for a man who cheated on his wife with a porn star and then paid the porn star off in hush money so it would not be publicly revealed 
First of all, what you prayed for was a lie. You said that he was charged with 34 counts and then raised 50 some odd million dollars. No, he was convicted of 34 counts and then raised the money. See, the conviction part was left out there. But, 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 but go ahead with your prayer. And he has the potential to be the 47th president of the United States of America. You have protected him from things seen and unseen. You have protected his family. We pray for his wife, his children. Father, we ask that late in the midnight hour that you would speak to him. We pray that you might visit him. Now, that, that, this, hold on, let me just roll this back a little second here. Now, let, let me explain something to y'all, how, how this is done with black people. The Father, we Watch ask this here. that hold late on. in the midnight hour that you would see. speak to him. Let me find him. it right here. We pray that Okay, see right here, y'all, see, this, this right here when you know he's a fake-ass Christian. Okay, everybody know, everybody know, when you praying, what does everybody do? Panel in unison? Bow your head. You bow your head. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. No. Trump. He praying, Trump, look, go back to the video. Oh, 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 way to go. Oh, great prayer, Negro, great prayer. Oh, yeah. Look at, that's what, oh, he just so, ha look at him. Head bowed, head bowed. Look at the pastor. Head bowed, pastor head bowed. Dude with the hat next to him, head bowed. Everybody head bowed. Y'all, this man ain't real. This man ain't real. Y'all know, y'all know this man ain't real. You know he not real. Because Donald Trump does not actually remotely even understand the Bible. We all know this. We all know because he flat out is a fraud. That man is uncomfortable as hell in church. And, and, and just so, just remind y'all, because see, again, I don't forget nothing. I don't forget nothing. Y'all might remember when uh, uh, he was asked this question in an interview. And, oh, Lord, if y'all want to see the fake Christian jump out, here we go. About how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised. Hold on, let me go on back to I'm the beginning. Here we go right here. Okay. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favorite Bible uh, verses are. Well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me, that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no verse I, that I, means I a lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible, I joke uh, very much so, they always hold up the art of the deal, I say my second favorite book of all time but uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special Okay, you mentioned the Bible <laughs> Yo, that fool actually said yeah, they're about equal You can ask a kid when Jesus wept, I mean, y'all. <laughs> oh no, I can, oh I don't, I don't know. It, it's, it's personal. I don't really, don't, I'm, you know. I'm just saying. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm trying to think of a scripture. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, shoot, I can't even remember one of them books. Uh, uh, oh, I mean, you know, I mean, since I like money, my favorite book, in, my favorite book of the Bible is Numbers. Um, let me see. Um, I'm trying to trying to understand, you know. Well, I tell you, my favorite story is when Jesus turned the temp the tables up upside down in the temples. Oh, I love the fact. You know what? I love the fact that the Bible talk about money more than anything else. Um, oh, I mean, I, I, know, I know they're talking about poor people, but, you know, I don't really want to talk about the poor people. So, yeah, but it's really personal. I mean, I'm just saying I it's so personal. I can't even tell y'all because you know what? I ain't never read it. I ain't never read it. But that's what we're dealing with here, y'all. That's who this pastor allowed into the church. And so when you allow somebody into your church and he can't even address any of these issues. 
He literally can't even speak to the issues. And, and y'all, keep, keep in mind, this fool is actually, actually hawking a Bible with him and Lee Greenwood. He's actually hawking a Bible. This man will sell out anything to make a buck. And so you sat here and listened to all that stuff he said, and it was lies. He was just making stuff up. And everything that I said, y'all, can easily be fact-checked. It's easily, verifi easily verifiable. Um, so uh, th that's exactly uh, how it goes. You know what I understand? I, I, I would love to, I, I, I can't wait to uh, ask uh, Pastor Lorenzo, um, do, does he believe that uh, the Christian in Trump should be talking like this about another Christian? You shouldn't use that kind of language. Look, look, you can't use the word shit, okay? That's like Christie, you know Chris Christie. Does anybody like Chris Christie? Good. So I was in New Hampshire and he was fighting, fighting. You know, he's like uh, totally unhinged. It's called Trump derangement syndrome. I would say he was a... He was a major case of Trump derangement syndrome, but he was in there and somebody from the front row said, sir, he's a fat pig. And I said, but nobody heard. The person was a nice person, but said very, you know, I said, you cannot call Chris Christie a fat pig. You cannot do that. Please, sir, if you call him a fat pig once more, I'm going to have to have you leave the arena. And the guy didn't know what was happening. I said, don't worry about it. I'm only kidding. You know? <laughs> but I said, you cannot call him a fat pig because you're not mm, allowed to use the fat that, word. That, that's, you know, that, you that's, use that's mighty, that's mighty, you know, um, it's mighty uh, Christian of him. Um, yeah, man. And I love this video here, y'all. Uh, this is a video here where conservatives are sitting around. They say, black church erupts when Donald Trump enters. No. White people who are not even from Michigan who were attending the Turning Point Conference showed up at a black church and they erupted. Watch. I mean, right there, y'all. If y'all had any confusion whatsoever uh, about um, who was all there, then you now understand. Um, Oh, do, do y'all also, um, did y'all know this? You know, I'm just saying, you know, this guy here, uh, this Texas me, uh, preacher, uh, this guy right here. Uh, did y'all hear that uh, Robert Morris uh, announced that, uh, you turn the audio up. We are about to bring tremendous progress to a problem that's been here for a long time. So this and pastor. Thank you for this administration. So this pastor right here, y'all, uh, admitted that, um, yeah, when he was 21 years old, he was uh, sexually molesting a 12-year-old girl. And yep, he's one of the uh, faith ministers uh, standing with Donald Trump. So uh, hmm, would have loved to have uh, that actually uh, uh, been uh, asked. Um, um, and so you got, uh, oh, wait, hold on. This, is this new? Um, so we got to check this here out. You know, the, so just so we understand uh, what's going on here, y'all. What we're facing is a man who is deranged. Trump sat there, and what it, this is the illusion. This is the illusion of inclusion. They hate DEI, but they love to, pat, to trumpet and just walk black folks through uh, like they are zoo animals. Uh, and put them on a parade uh, standing with Donald Trump. Y'all, he lied. He lied about black poverty. He lied about HBCUs. He lied about black unemployment. He lied about black home ownership. And if you are black and you are considering voting for this man, he don't give a damn about you at all. It is a flat out lie. And what we saw Saturday was lapped up by all these white folks, Julian, who claim, oh no, this was wonderful. Look at the black people for Trump when it wasn't number 15, maybe 18 black people in that whole church. But Kellyanne Conway said it was 8,000. Well, she can't count any more than he does. Remember what she said. She has, you have your facts and I have my facts. 
And so her facts were that the church was overflowed with black people. Your camera says a totally different thing. Um, this whole thing is, is just amusing. First of all, remember that time that Trump, he tried to, that's why he didn't do a verse that time. He tried to use a verse and he said something like uh, two Corinthians or whatever he did. He got it totally out of context and made it clear that he never reads the Bible, uh, doesn't know anything about the Bible, doesn't know anything about Christianity or anything else. Um, I'm shame on that pastor. How would he let his church be used like that? You got, you know, three black people on the panel or the pastor and two black people on the panel um, and some Latino looking lady. But do you have any black people in the audience? He, he allowed himself to be used. That's all. But but again, this is what the 45th president does. He uses people. Um, he lies. I mean, he, he, the litany of lies is so long. He lies and he just basically has no principles. But there are black people, some, not many, but some, who allow him to get away with that nonsense. It's disgusting. That's all I can say. It's disgusting. Oma Congo? You know, you, you laid out everything. And, you know, as, as, so I can't really add anything more than what you said about the nonsense and the lies that took place. My other issue today is just with the media. I watched, you know, lots of news. I didn't watch everything. But outside of you, I only saw, you know, Joanne Reed, who was talking about the fact that people should not be saying he went to speak to a black church and black churchgoers, because that's not what happened. It's like me going to a synagogue and speaking to Catholics and people saying that I spoke to Jewish voters at a synagogue. That's not what happened here. It was white folks there at a black church, but he didn't, as norm, as he normally does, he speaks to white people about black people. And the media, if, if, if these other networks that are not pro-Trump are not going to get their facts straight to CNN, MSNBCs, then they're pretty much acting like the New York Post or the Wall Street Journal because they're, they're validating the nonsense and they're validating the lie. They needed to fact check like you just did. The fact, and then that group of black people, they were over in the corner like it was a civil rights section or something. It's like, that that group, they weren't even in the main part of the like what the what the hell was that about, right? And then on top of that, lastly, with the with the pastor, you know, he's using his platform to be an extension of Trump as well. And you're talking about, oh, you're an entrepreneur, you keep your money. How can you teach us how to keep money in our community? Donald Trump's companies don't keep money in this country. They the Trump ties are made in China. You know, Ivanka Trump's uh, his daughter's getting all of these deals and all of this up. Uh, it, it's all a fraud. And so the pastor either fell for it or knew what he was doing but wanted to get this praise. Byron Donald shucking and jiving there as well. The, the media failed us. That church failed us. And I see you as the only person outside of Joy Ann Reed who's calling this out in terms of the media that I watched today. I know other people probably did, but these other mainstream media sources dropped the ball and by default are an extension of Trump and Kellyanne Conway's lies. Uh, this all this man does is lie. He told some 30,000 lies, Jolanda, when he occupied the Oval Office, and he will keep lying. Well, you know what? I'm not even going to go tit for tat with the lies, right? There are a number of things that just jumped to my mind when I saw this story. One, why do black pastors allow them into our churches? I mean, I never see white folks bring us to their white churches and say, hey, these are good black people. It doesn't happen. So I'm trying to figure out. Well, 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 well you know, it all depends because, you know, Ed Young like magical Negroes. Uh, but I, well, I'm not talking about step and fetch it Negroes. I'm not talking about the Clarence Thomas Negroes. I'm not talking about those Negroes. I'm talking about real black people. But I will say this. We can remember or we understand history. Well, maybe not because they took it out of schools that people who looked exactly like us on the continent sold us into slavery. They look like us, and therefore we believe them. This is no different. This is a Stephen from Django Unchained person. Something else I want to say is that Trump should have been doing confession. He damn so shouldn't have been preaching at all. And some of the biggest devils are in church. I think this is a prime example of it. It makes me sad that religion has been the opium of us even to get through slavery, yet we're allowing our churches to be pimped. Um, when I looked at the black people in the church, I saw the girl with the big white ribbon. I mean, we, we don't wear stuff like that. I saw the lady with the, uh, I almost felt like she had dip-de-doo 
putting it on uh, for the baby girls to lay down. I mean, they literally are stereotyping us. They're caricaturing us. The black people that they had, the few black people that they had in that church look like the people who they always put us on TV looking at. Um, so I'm really sick of these step and fetch it Negroes. And whenever Trump's mouth, his lips are moving or Kellyanne Conway's lips are moving, it's like, you know, they're lying whenever he says never or ever with no facts. He just lies. And my question is to us, to black people, this is for us. Are we going to just let him come in and like pee on us, tell us it's raining and us going to believe it? That's what I don't understand. But I've, I, going back to what we talked about before, Roland, I really think it's important that the black media tell the true story. And that costs money. I mean, they pay white media to do stuff. And evil thrives when good people remain silent. So the white media not calling out the lies is a problem, which, again, is why I respect you so much, because it takes courage to do right when it's so easy to do wrong and to speak truth to power, and you do that. And so for me, I'm just, apart from I'm really pissed about the lies and the caricatures of us on what appears to be legitimate media, because a lot of us, we look at TV, and if it's on TV, we think it's real. And I'm challenging everyone, all good, decent people, to speak up and speak out, and I'm challenging the Biden administration to reach out to those of us who have our ears to the ground and who are literally talking to people locally so that we can tell the truth and speak truth to power. Because as long as they're going with the headlines, Trump speaks at black church, that's BS. And I, again, I firmly believe this. I've said this long before I was on this particular segment of your show. Black churches need to stop opening their doors to white politicians. I believe we, could, she, we should treat them like they treat us. When they start opening their doors to us, and I mean, people talking about real black problems and real black issues and saying, hey, this, this is a legitimate issue. This is a black person that's fighting for this. White people, please vote for them. When they do that to us, we need to do that. But we have far too many pastors in the black community is, is that they give us a shiny penny and we'll take it and we'll and we'll bring them around and we'll validate them. And I think we as black people, we've got to do better. We cannot worry, wait on white people to save us. We've absolutely got to save ourselves through black elected officials who are down with our communities, through black media, through black radio, through black newspapers, through black podcasts, through black campaign consultants, through black pollsters, through black organizations that fight for black people legitimately. Because something else that the white media does not do, they don't poll us right. They are always wrong. They said the same stuff about President Obama. He was gonna lose his reelection. And they kept having these buffoons on TV talking to us saying, oh, he ain't never did nothing for black people. And I'm trying to figure out, where you find this Negro? Because every black person I know understood that things were better. So they go and they find the least of us and they promote them. And then we listen. Y'all, everybody well, that's our skin folk ain't our kin folk. Well, and that's Trust why, it, 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 that. listen, I, listen, I, 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 listen, I can't control what those folks do. Uh, people, I've had people hit me up and say, man, I wish you were on Urban View on Sirius XM, uh, you know, taking Joe Madison plays. I wish you on MSNBC, wish you on it. I say, y'all, I can't book myself. If somebody calls me, I'll answer the call. But what I do know is that's going to be one place where between now and November, we're going to show you contrast. It's going to be based upon facts. We're going to say this is what Biden Harris has done. This is what Trump's proposing. This is what he did when he had the power. And so when this pastor here was talking about Trump's platinum plan, that was a fraudulent plan. It was totally fraudulent. Why? Because he threw it out there late October when he had three and a half years to do it. He had no intention. He had no intention of doing anything for black people. And then the back, fact of the matter is this here. Uh, he later complained about the First Step Act because he complained. He's like, well, I, I, I shouldn't have done it. It wasn't going to get me black votes. Yeah. Mm. He did that. So we're going to do this here and we're going to keep informing our people and we're not going to fall for the okie doke. And we're going to let y'all know exactly uh, what's important here, because every time this man lies, we're going to call his ass out. And every time 
somebody black allows this man to lie in their presence, we gonna call him out. That's why every time Senator Tim Scott lies about Trump and HBCU funding, I blast his ass. And if Byron Donalds and Burgess Owens and John James and Wesley Hunt or anybody else, black and conservative, because when my man Chris Messler was alive, people would tell Chris, I don't understand when you go on Roland's show, Roland don't be sitting here cutting you off, uh, loud talking to you. And Chris said, because I don't lie like y'all do. <laughs> he said, if you lie, he said, if you lie, Roland going to cut you off. And he's absolutely right. We have got to expose these charlatans, expose these liars every time. And I can't wait for the pastor to come on because I got a few questions for him. Like specifically, why did he knowingly allow Donald Trump mm -hmm. to lie in his church when it was easy to Google the facts? it happened, poor people were dying at a rate already of 800 people a day before COVID. If you went to a funeral every single day, it would take you 600 years to attend all the funerals of the people who will die from the ravages of policy, violence, poverty, and low wages in America in just one year. It would take you two years and 19 days to go to all of the funerals of the people that will die today and oftentimes Silence. Nobody talks about this political genocide, but we are determined today to remember their death and be a resurrection of voting power and voice power like never before. Economic justice and saving this democracy are deeply connected. We as a nation must listen to the demands of the poor who are pushing and will continue to push political candidates and elected leaders to lift from the bottom so that everybody can rise. We are the poor, the marginalized, and the underpaid. And we are taking one step forward to say that everybody has a right to live. Poverty is not the fault of those who are impoverished. It is caused by those who make the policy. There are over 135 million poor and low wage, low income people in this nation. The biggest block of potential voters by far is low income, low wage voters. I can't afford medicine. Sometimes I have to skip because of the cost. The farm worker community is tired of the violence imposed upon us by greed, exclusion, and denial of basic human rights. Those folk that represented by that casket, poor and low wage workers who are the most moral people in this country because they go to work every day believing even though going to work is hazardous to their health. I'm tired of working 70 to 80 hours a week and still not have money for the necessity of bills. I'm tired of getting sick and not being able to go see the doctor. Having to make a choice to pay between rent or the light bill or food or clothes. You cannot claim to care about families and a culture of life and then do everything in your power to rob people of equal access to resources and to force them to live in poverty. Leadership of both parties that waged war on poor people and low wage workers. And this government has treated people experiencing poverty, including their military families, with disdainful, deliberate, malicious neglect. So the truth is that my son died from poverty. We refuse to accept poverty as the fourth leading cause of death. The fourth leading cause of death in this, the richest country in the world. We march today for our children and the generations to come. And we need to do it with the loudest voices possible, the biggest actions possible. We will voice our demands and register our vote. When we stand up and when we stand together, things change. Right. There is the electorate that is, and then there is the electorate that should be. 34 million eligible poor and low-income voters did not vote in 2016. If just 20% of those voters in swing states were mobilized around an agenda, they could change the political outcome of every election. Yeah. 
So we're launching the most massive voter mobilization and turnout campaign in history of poor and low-wage voters, allies, and religious leaders. People are dying, but we know it doesn't have to be this way. And so we are calling on everyone to join us in this Poor People's Campaign, a national call for more revival. We are here, we will be seen, we will be heard, and our power will be felt. We don't need to be an insurrection. We are a resurrection that will be felt across this country. Are you ready? 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 We are a resurrection, and we are ready. And we